we're gonna play with some new just arrived makeup and skincare from Sephora today. Some of the products I have used and then some I'm trying for the first time today. So there's been some new releases that I've picked up from Sephora. Why does this have gunk on it? This has eyelash glue on it. Anyways, I don't know, it's been a while I feel like since I've tested a bunch of new makeup from Sephora, that's a lie. I just posted a Sephora haul. Anyways, whatever. I just have some new makeup that I wanna try. But first, skincare. I actually wanted to talk about some skincare items that I used today for the first time that I wanted to try. So I tried the new Fenty Skin items. So there's a cocoa bar and then the fat water. So there's a stand for it and then you have the cocoa bar soap. So this can be used for body and face and I think this is the perfect shower item for me because I usually work out in the mornings and I don't wash my face in the mornings except when I work out. So this is perfect to keep in the shower for me to wash my face with as well as the body and I liked it I mean I don't really use cleansing bars I prefer gels I'm excited about this the whole concept of it I think it's just gonna be a great shower skincare item but what really excited me I was really excited to test was the Fenty skin fat water so this is a hydrating milky toner essence I love kind of a milky toner so it says it hydrates softens and refines the look of pores with vitamin rich and formulated to help maintain skin's moisture barrier and I tried it for the first time today I like that it's a toner you don't need to apply with a cotton pad or anything so you twist the top there's a little hole and then the toner will come out. It's like a thick toner feeling or I guess like a really lightweight liquidy moisturizer is what it feels like and then you use your fingers and pat it in the skin and I really liked it. I still felt like I needed to go in with a moisturizer afterwards but I'm excited to continue using this. I feel like it's a product that's really going to benefit my skin and my pores. <laughs> Obviously I only used it today. My explanation for one use can only take you so far when it comes to skincare but I'm really excited about this and the scent of it is so nice. It's not artificial smelling. It has a faint scent of like chrysanthemum flower. No, I drink chrysanthemum tea growing up. So I'm excited about the new Fenty skincare. So I wanted to share that. Let's get into the makeup now that my skin is all prepped. So I have this new foundation from Beauty Blender. This is the Liquid Whip Long Wear Foundation. I picked out the shade Medium Nude Neutral. It looks dark on the sticker, so hopefully it ends up working out for me. I'm honestly not very experienced with Beauty Blender makeup products. I've tried a powder from them in the past, but that's it. Maybe like a blush or something, but not very much. So this is what the foundation looks like. It looks a little yellowish, but not bad. I feel like this is gonna be actually a very, very good match for me. So I'm gonna start off by taking up my finger and spreading the product that has a thicker consistency it's not one that's going to run down your arm I don't know too much about this product I just know that it's new okay and let's use a sponge to push it in this is just a beauty blender it doesn't have too glowy of a finish which I'm not bothered by because it is summer and makeup be running off my face huh that actually looks very pretty I've never tried a beauty blender foundation before but I feel like I didn't apply too much and it looks really good let me get this half of my forehead god I just love Sephora so much it's my favorite store in the world <laughs> I love always going through the aisles, seeing what's new in skincare, hair care, makeup, fragrance, all of it I love. So here is one pretty thin layer. I think it looks pretty good. It has a nice skin-like finish, honestly. It's not smoothing over the pores or anything, I would say, but it's not emphasizing them either. Let's go ahead and spread this on the other side of my face. I really like how it's applying with the Beauty Blender as well, which is great. I imagine they formulate their products to work well with the OG of their brand. I normally keep coverage pretty light on my forehead because I don't have much to cover and also that's where I sweat the most. So definitely on the cheeks is where I need the most coverage. Let's get a little bit more down the nose. And I think we're gonna keep the layer here. I think it looks really nice. I would definitely say if you have dry skin, you wanna hydrate your skin properly because it's not a super moisturizing feeling product. But I think it has a nice finish. And I feel like when I start to have my natural oils come through as I like live, you know, throughout the day and exist, it will moisturize the skin more because I can tell you guys know I have a little bit of dryness in my skin. It's not looking 
super hot on the dry areas of my face but it's not looking bad but i feel like it's something that can easily be resolved just through natural wear throughout the day i find typically with the best wearing foundations they tend to not look as good as they do until you start really wearing it. So we're giving it the benefit of the doubt because I think I'm so sick of the glowy skincare infused products that this is a nice change. Now I can tell you it's not my favorite foundation ever in the world already. Like my new hourglass foundation, nothing has beat that yet. So the hourglass is still better, but this, I like it. And it's a really great color for me. Phenomenal. So just continuing on with how I typically do my makeup, we're gonna go to brows. So I have this from Patrick Ta. I've already used this a number of times. I've demoed it already in a Sephora haul, but this is the Major Dimensions Brow Pencil and not really much interest. You know, I don't hear a lot of people talking about this, but everything Patrick Ta launches, honestly, is just incredible. And this is nothing short of that, so I thought I'd talk about it anyways because it is new and it is awesome. It has the finest little tip and it's really great for creating those hair-like strokes. So I'm going to brush brush my hairs up and then I like to create a line along the bottom of the brow. Oh, you guys, you know what I'm noticing? Back to the foundation, there's a little bit of pilling happening. I think it's pilling with the moisturizer that I used because all I have down is moisturizer. That's not a good sign. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to continue obviously testing out the foundation, but it actually is pilling with my base, but that could be user error. I'll just test it with some other things, and I would definitely update you in a updates video. But anyways... I brush the brows down and I'm filling in the sparse areas and creating an arch. So the arch area is the sparsest part of my brow, so I normally have to just make it and fake it, you know? Then we brush back up because you can see how instantly that just filled in the area. And then I'm going to continue with my hair strokes. So we point up towards the beginning of the brow and then as we get towards the tail, brush outwards. This brow pencil is honestly perfect. It's not too creamy at all. It actually is a little bit more on the dry side, which allows for those more precise hair light strokes. Anything Patrick touches turns to gold. So definitely highly recommend this. I'm gonna put on some brow gel real quick and I'll be back. So this item is one of the reasons that I just did this whole video all together because I'm really excited to try this. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Light Illuminating Smoothing Concealer. So the Too Faced Born This Way complexion line has some of my favorite products. The Born This Way Full Coverage Concealer, the best. One of my all-time favorite concealers. So I wanted to try the glowy, more natural version. So let's see, I picked up the shade Pecan. I'm excited. Let's focus it in the inner corner and I like to bring it down. I like to do it this way because I don't really need much coverage out here anyways. I mostly need it in this area and then I like to blend it down onto my cheek for extra coverage. I like the shade. This is really good. I don't normally like too brightening of a concealer. Okay, what do we think? It definitely has a glowy finish to it. You can see the difference between the foundation finish, which is a little bit more matte, compared to the glowiness of the concealer. So I don't know how well these two actually pair together, but whatever. It looks lightweight. It's giving more so of a medium coverage I would say if even that it's definitely on the lighter side though I don't think it claims to give full coverage okay let's get the other side it's not super liquidy it's not super smoothing either I can tell you I already prefer the full coverage version but it does look quite natural so if it wears well it, it might be good for natural every day let's see what do they claim it does it's they say it's waterproof I don't I don't know about that this is a serum like concealer I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and I would say it gives a light to medium coverage. It looks natural. It has the glow. It looks good. It doesn't smooth out the under eyes, but it looks very healthy on the under eyes. So I'm gonna have to see with wear time. I think I like it. Oh, I meant to do my eyeshadow first. Too late now. But okay, I think I like it. We're gonna let it sit under the eyes without setting so I can see how soon it takes to go into the fine lines, but it's actually doing pretty good. We'll see. To be decided. I have another beauty blender product. This is cool. This is the Bounce Bronzer and Highlighter. So it's a creamy bronzer and highlight duo. I think this is a cream product. Let's see. I don't know how new this is, but it's definitely a newer to me product from Beauty Blender. So I thought I'd try it. So how it works at the top, there's like a cap and you have a, let me see, a cream highlight which I think might be a little, I don't know, this might be a little deep. It has like a goldenness to it. And then you twist the cap 
and you have a cream bronzer. So this is the shade Highlighter Champagne Bronzer Topaz. So champagne and topaz. Let's try out this bronzer. Let's see how it feels. Ooh, very, very emollient. Oh, extremely emollient. Interesting. This definitely has some warmth to it. Okay, and you can see the texture just by kind of how the fingerprint looks there. It has more of like a wet liquidy consistency as opposed to a souffle consistency. So I'm gonna go extra light with my brush because it actually might benefit more from a sponge given the consistency, but okay, this is blending out pretty nice. I'm gonna use a sponge on the other side, I think. Oh, I like this. This looks good and I think it's gonna bring back some hydration to the skin from the foundation. It's a pretty color as well. It's actually a really great color for my skin tone. I like it. Let me use a sponge though. I think sponge is definitely better. It does pick up a lot of color though, so be careful about that. Ooh, I like this bronzer. I think it's nice. Yeah, so it is definitely a creamier consistency, but I think it blended into the skin really nice. I'm a fan of that, and that definitely added some hydration back to my face. I'm gonna mess around with the cream highlight. I typically don't like cream highlights, and I'm only gonna do it on one side of my cheek to start because I have a shimmery blush to try next, and I wanna see how the blush looks on its own. I use a beauty blender, and I get it in there. That didn't do much, honestly. I don't know if it's because it's too dark on me, but oh, I gave a little something very, very natural and subtle. I think it's because it is kind of a deeper shade. I'm gonna go ahead and just use my finger. This kind of has a bounce consistency to it. Let's take a look before I put it on my cheeks. You can see it's that bouncy putty formula. Oh, finger is much better. Do not use sponge like I did. Finger will get the most product on there. Oh, that's nice. I'd rather honestly go for a powder highlight, but that's my answer 99.9% .9 of the time. I still think it is pretty. I'm definitely purchasing this more so for the bronzer than the highlight, but the highlight works and it's actually very pretty and natural. I don't know if you can see the difference, but I like that product. I don't have anything bad to say about it. Awesome. The next item I have, I specifically went to Sephora for. I've been eyeing this for a couple of weeks now. This is the new Laura Mercier blush infusion formula. It's a shimmer formula. They only had a couple of shades, but I had to try it out. Their blushes are one of my all-time favorite formulas. So when I saw they had the shimmer version, I really wanted to try it out. This is what the color looks like. It's definitely very natural. Let's see. Ugh, just love this formula. So pretty. Now this color itself I can see is more on the natural side. So if you have a medium skin tone, I don't think this is going to work well. But this is pairing beautifully over top of the Beauty Blender highlight. And it looks gorgeous. Now let me see it on its own to see if the gold sheen is coming from the highlight or the blush. Oh, definitely the blush. So the gold kind of flip to it is quite strong. Honestly, I don't necessarily love that a lot in my cheek products, but I don't mind it in this. Because of that golden shift, it is somewhat emphasizing textures and pores, but that's the name of the game. That's what a highlight does. I think this is beautiful. It applied beautifully. This is not automatically my favorite Laura Mercier blush though, but I'm happy I got it. And it has a much stronger golden shift than I was expecting, but I honestly... Try more shades of this. I think this is very pretty for when I want a shimmery blush and it gave a really pretty, somewhat tanned and bronzed look to the face. I'm gonna go ahead and add in just a little bit of the Beauty Blender highlight with my finger just right on top. These two bleed beautifully together. They complement each other really nicely. Stunning! I really love how my cheeks look, actually. I love the peach base color itself, but it does give a pretty bronzy glow when I turn and then you can see that golden to it. Ooh, okay, so let's check back in on the concealer. I'm actually really impressed. I think because it is like that thinner serum-like consistency, it honestly has not sunk into fine lines at all. It looks really, really good. Oh, that's a very good sign. I'm gonna just super lightly powder it though because that's how I typically would do it. I don't have any brand new powders to share with you. So I thought since I have a new foundation and everything, I'd go with some tried and true products to see how they really wear. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my Pat McGrath Sublime Setting Powder in Light. My favorite 
Crescent the under eyes. I'm just gonna do a light layer in the center of my face where I need it the most. And this powder is like so weightless on the skin, it doesn't add really too much of a layer, but it does leave behind a nice blurred finish to the skin. One of my all time favorite setting powders. Look at that. That looks really good. We're gonna see how that wears. So the concealer definitely, because it's so thin, it doesn't really smooth or change the appearance of the under eyes, but it doesn't emphasize anything bad. And it went really well on its own. So I feel like this could be a concealer. You could get away without setting. But that brings me to the next item. This one I've been dying to try. I can't believe I haven't tried it yet. It launched a few weeks ago, but yeah, I'm finally trying out the Too Faced Better Than Chocolate Eyeshadow Palette. I mean, there's newer eyeshadow palettes that I have, but I've been dying to try this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one eye and I'll be back. Honestly, based on the swatches of this though, I'm not that excited about it. Swatch really inconsistent, so we'll see. I'm in the very early stages of testing out this palette. So I did a look that's very true to what I would do on the daily. I haven't tested the shades that swatched bad. So I can only speak on my experience with the shades that I did use and all the shades that I used were great. But I can definitely tell by the swatches that I'm gonna run into difficulties once I continue playing with this. But today was good and I did a pretty typical better than chocolate look for the chocolate line. This palette's more nostalgia than anything, isn't it? So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with nice buns. I'm using a BK Beauty 201 brush and this is just gonna be my crease color. Not doing anything fancy with the eye look today. This is just a look that I love, I feel comfortable in. The scent of this palette isn't too strong. I feel like back in the day, these palettes had a much stronger scent, which honestly I preferred, but I don't think all of you would prefer that like me. I love fragrant stuff. I know a lot of people People don't want fragrance in their makeup. I love it. <laughs> and I'm just blending this out. You can see it's working out fine. It's giving the perfect level of pigmentation. This is just a great everyday palette if you like browns and then you have the options to play with the pops. I'll see how those perform. It's a good palette. I'm using Bitter Half and I'm gonna start by blending it, the outer corner, defining the lower lash line a little more. And then you can see, again, I'm not having any difficulties blending. It's working out really, really nice. And then let's hop into brownie points right here, which is the deepest shade, though I do feel like it is kind of close, just a slightly more neutral undertone. Lots of browns in here that honestly are unnecessary. <laughs> I know it's a chocolate palette, but lots of browns in this palette. I'm gonna blend that along the lower lash line. You guys know I'm boring at heart. I love a good, deep brown eye. Can't go wrong, it always looks good. So I'm starting off with that. And I'm using this shade right here, I'm the Dessert, and it feels pretty creamy, and it's a pretty orangey chocolate shade. And I'm gonna blend that. Oh my gosh, I just went into the next color without telling you. I'm going into Milk It, which is a shimmery white, and I'm using that as my inner corner color. And then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Refer Number 3 brush, which by the way, they're having a buy one, get one free sale on their website. So if you do wanna try some Refer brushes, now's a good time. I'll have my affiliate link down below if you want to shop through that and support my channel. And we're going into Ooey Gooey, which is a lighter shade, and I'm just gonna get a sprinkle of it, like right here. And that's it, that's the look, I'm keeping it very, very simple and chocolatey. So, so far with the palette, with the, what, one, two, three, the five shades that I use, they all were really great, but they were the brown colors. For me, what swatched weird was like these shades here and a couple of the shimmers. So we'll continue to use that, but at least the chocolate shades, the shades the palette are named of, look really good. I do have a new eyeliner to try. Now it's not a new formula, but it's a new color. So One Size launched a navy and a dark dark brown eyeliner. These are their Point Made Waterproof Liquid Eyeliners, which I do really like. I don't love the applicator on them, but I'm gonna use the shade Busty Brown for today's look. So let's see how this one is. I just feel like the felt tip is a little too long for me but I'm excited. I do really like the quality of it. Don't talk to me while I'm doing this. Let's see the pigment. Okay, nice. It's not too watery of a formula, which I like. Pressing it along my lash line. I like that. I love a good brown liner. It's just so much less intense, but it still gets the job done. That really is nice. And the wear time on this liner is pretty good as well. It's not my favorite all-time liner, but it's a good liner. And I like the tone of this brown. It's not too red. 
I mean, I think I'd probably prefer it a little bit more neutral, maybe a hint darker, but I still think it's a really great everyday brown shade. I'm gonna try and do like the littlest inner corner wing, but I definitely can't teach you. <laughs> I'm so, I gotta be quiet. We are looking good, I like it. I have a new mascara to try. This is from Makeup Forever, it looks really interesting. It's the Profession All Mascara, so there are two sides to it. Step one is the lifting, which actually has a smaller spoolie, and then step two is volume, which has a larger spoolie. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm gonna start off with step one, the lift. Let's see if this does add some lift. I did curl my lashes prior, so it just added some natural definition, I would say, to my lashes. Get the other eye, and then I'm gonna get my lower. Okay, and lower lashes not doing too much for my lower lashes so that's just with one coat of the lifted side if you have big lashes you, naturally you might actually like this for me i'm like excited to try the volume side so let's get into volume here oh yeah this is already adding the voom boom that i want it's funny i don't even really care about mascaras that much though just throw in a falsy then you're good to go and then most importantly, let's see how we look on the lower lashes. The lower lashes, I'm not throwing falsies on. Ooh, it looks good. Ooh, this looks really good on my lower lashes. I don't have much to work with, and the fact that I can see them is a big deal. Now, for mascaras, first time use, it's always a harder for me to judge, but it looks good. We'll continue wearing it. Okay, let's go into the very last lip product. This is Urban Decay's newest lip product. This is the Lip Bond. Very interesting. These are unbreakable liquid lip colors. They sent me over three different shades. So I think I'm going to go in with Pleased since it's more brown. So these are supposed to be super long wearing, right? It says intense and full color payoff that won't crack or feather. So let's try it. It says to shake very well. Listen to that. There's something in there to shake it. Okay, let's see. This is a good fall color, I think. Oh, it's very orange. Oh, I don't like that color. <laughs> Hold on, let me put on a brown lip liner first. So I went ahead and grabbed this since this is fairly new from Sephora. This is Rare Beauty Lip Liner and Strong. Um, can I be honest with you guys about the Rare Beauty lip stuff? I don't really like them. They don't last on me, like at all, even the lip liners. They are great to apply, a great color range. They feel super comfortable, but in the blink of an eye, I feel like it's all gone and I have nothing on my lips. Anyways, I've never tried this color before. It should last longer because it's a little deeper. But anyways, if you've tried the Rare Beauty lip stuff, can you let me know what you think? Are they lasting on you? Because while I like them and I like applying them, they have to like be carried around with me because the color just disappears so quickly. It doesn't need to be applied too neat. I just wanted a background color. Okay, now let's try this color again. Much better. It's not a super liquidy formula, but it does feel thin, but it's quite comfortable. Hmm, okay, with the lip liner, we like that a lot better, and it doesn't look crackly on the lips. It's gonna have to set down, so I'm gonna throw on a natural pair of falsies and see how everything settles in together. I put on lashes in a box number eight on the lashes. Love these. It's been a while since I've worn them. Interesting about this lip product because it doesn't really fully dry down at all, so it stays creamy, but it definitely is sticking to my lips so this is definitely long wearing but it's kind of sticky which I don't like but I do like it I think it's nice it look it goes with the wrinkles of your lips as you stretch them in and out interesting it just doesn't fully dry down but it's definitely gonna last on your lips and okay friends I mean this is the look using a bunch of new makeup at Sephora the only product that I'm unsure about and I still think I like it is the beauty blender bounce liquid whip long wear foundation I'm just unsure because it was kind of pilling up in some areas, so I'm gonna try it with a different moisturizer or see if it does that on its own. Everything else I used was really, really solid. So far, I'm really enjoying the concealer. I'm gonna update you on the wear of both the foundation and the concealer. The new Laura Mercier blush formula is gorgeous. Love this bronzer and highlight duo from Beauty Blender. I mean, I am doubtful that I will end up loving this palette at the end of it all, but the specific shades that I used from the Too Faced better than chocolate they worked really good I mean I love my makeup it gives me the chocolate look I mean I bought this definitely more so for nostalgia than anything it, they haven't come out with the chocolate palette in forever the look is good <laughs> it's a typical kind of chocolatey look what else did I try that was new love this new brown eyeliner I think it looks so good the makeup forever uh, mascara solid thus far and same thing with the urban decay lip product and also very good experience with the Fenty skin so really Really good application 
today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video talking about some of the new makeup at Sephora. My main question for you is what are your thoughts on the Rare Beauty lip products because I've been scared to say I don't like them. Let me know. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.